Probably stopping treatment is a dominant topic at this ASH. And from a patient advocacy perspective, of course, extremely important because uh, we got data from Euroski, which is the largest study. And uh, it's quite interesting because it's been one of these studies where nobody wanted to provide funding. But in the end, it saved about 22 million euros just on the participants that were not taking the drugs because they could successfully stop treatment. And uh, what we see at this ASH, it's the first analysis of the first 758 patients. And we can see that about 50%, a bit less than 50% can actually stop treatment. But what is interesting also, and probably uh, tells us a lot uh, from patients and from doctors, that there have been late recurrences. So people at the 31, 33rd month, even though most people that fail stop to stop treatment, fail within the first six months, there were a couple of people in, at a very late phase after three years, which basically means people never get out of, the, of, out of the monitoring loop. So they need to continuously monitor these patients. It's not like in breast cancer where after four years you're out. Uh, in CML, we probably need to monitor for life, and that's probably a different thing which we need to uh, see. But data is promising, and uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, Euroski is an academic study looking at all the TKIs, and a stop with lenotinib has been demonstrated. The data has been uh, shown here. Uh, on Dazalzinib stop studies, uh, there's data. There's more data on posters from Japan, from Asia, from, from uh, America, from Europe. So I think it's a very prevalent topic here at ASH. I mean, it's a great thing to stop. I've been on therapy for 13 years. I've stopped treatment about two and a half years ago. And of course, it feels great uh, to be without treatment. But still, you have this little man in the back of your, your brain, which tells you you need to go in six, eight weeks again for testing. And that's why we in CML Advocates are actually starting a project on TFR, because information for patients is missing. And at the same time, a lot of physicians are seeing the data from ASH and they think, well, it's pretty safe to stop, but it is only safe if you're very strict on the protocol, if you have good quality PCR. And I'm really, really worried for those patients that are being stopped without the appropriate measures and appropriate monitoring. They will probably progress, they will probably die. So it's not an easy uh, thing.